Hey guys, welcome to Learn Today IGCSE. This video is a tutorial on chemistry, paper 4 theory, variant 4-2 for October-November 2023 examinations. Question 1. Table 1.1 gives the electronic configurations of some atoms and ions A to G. This is table 1.1. Answer the following questions about A to G. Each letter may be used once, more than once, or not at all. State which of the atoms or ions A to G could be the following. Okay, let's first look A to G. From electronic configuration, we can obtain two information. One is the group and the other is the period. For instance, there are two shells in atom A, meaning that this will be in period 2 and since the valence electron is 5, this will be in group 5. And for instance, for atom E, it has three shells, therefore it will be in period 3. And the valence electron is 5, so it will be in group 5. So I'm just going to write down the group numbers at the side of each atom. Question A, a noble gas atom. Noble gases are from group 18 or known as group 8. So group 8 is atom B. Next, an atom of an element in group 6. So group 6 is over here, it's F. C, an atom with an atomic number of 14. An atomic number of 14. To get the atomic number, we'll add up all the electrons that are present in the atom. And we will get 14 for atom D. Question D, atoms from the same group. Same group means they have the same valence electron. And we've got 5 and 5 both on A and E. So the answer is A and E. Next question E, a halogen atom. A halogen atom is from group 17 or known as group 7, which is atom G. Question F, an atom of an element which is a good conductor of electricity. A good conductor of electricity is from metal. Group 1 to group 3 are metals, so that will be atom C. Next, a stable ion of a group 5 element. Even though it says group 5 element, it's already been stable. That means it have achieved an octet valence electron. So we're going to look for valence electron of 8, which is B. And lastly, an atom that forms an ion with negative 2 charge. Negative 2 charge means it will gain 2 electrons to reach a stable state. So that would be a valence electron of 6 because when it gains 2 electrons, it will become 8 electrons. Question 2. Cobalt and copper are transition elements. Question A. Copper has two naturally occurring isotopes, this and this. Cobalt has only one naturally occurring isotope. Part 1. Complete Table 2.1 to show the number of protons, neutrons and electrons in the cobalt atom and the copper 2 plus ion. So firstly, we need to find the protons number for cobalt and copper. So this is cobalt and this is copper. The number at the top here is your proton number and the number bottom here is the nucleon number. So it's 27 for cobalt and 29 for copper. Next is the neutrons number. In a nuclear notation, X here represents the symbol of the element. For instance, over here, it will be CO for cobalt. And then the number at the top here is the nucleon number. And B here is the proton number. Now nucleon number is the total sum of proton number plus neutrons number in the nucleus of an atom. So to find the neutron number, we're gonna take our nuclear number minus with the proton number, which is 27, which is 32. And we'll do the same thing for copper 2 plus ion. This nuclear number is 65 minus with its proton number 29. We are going to get 36. And lastly, we're going to look for the electrons. What you have to remember is that for an atom, the proton number is equal to its electron number. However, for ions, the proton number is not equal to the electron's number because an ion means that it has either donated electrons or gained the electrons. That's why they are not equal. There are no charges here in cobalt. It means that this is an atom. The proton number and electron number will be similar. So here, 27. Next, we've got copper 2+. Plus. 2 plus here means that it has donated two electrons. So initially it had 29. After donating two electrons, now they are left with 27 electrons. Next, question part two. 
Table 2.2 shows the relative abundance of the two naturally occurring isotopes of copper. Calculate the relative atomic mass of copper to one decimal place. Calculating the relative atomic mass from relative abundance is very simple. There is a formula for this. We're going to take the percentage of each isotope and then multiply it with the nuclear number and divide it with 100%. Just solve this in your calculator and you will get 63.6. .6. They want you to leave your answer in one decimal place, so this answer is your final answer. Next question B. One physical property of transition elements such as copper and cobalt is that they are hard. Other metals such as lithium are softer. State two other physical properties of copper and cobalt which are significantly different from lithium. Okay, I've mentioned this in almost all of my videos. Look for your course specification of every subject and get it printed out. Your course specification can be really handy because it outlines all the topics and subtopics that you should pay attention to in your subject. For instance here, in Transition Element 8.4, it already mentions to you that you need to know the properties of transition elements as metals. They have high densities, high melting points, they form colored compounds, and they act as catalysts. Cost specification can be really handy, so make sure you have them printed out for all your subjects and use them as a guideline when you are answering past year questions. Question C. Both copper and cobalt can form colored compounds. Some of these compounds contain water of crystallization. Define the term water of crystallization. Under Chapter 7, 7.3 Preparation of Salts, you will see that they have defined for you the term of crystallization as the water molecules present in hydrated crystals. Next, Question Part 2. State the color and formula of hydrated cobalt chloride crystals. And next, you need to state the color and change seen when a few drops of water are added to anhydrous copper sulfate. For reversible reaction, you will come across examples of two crystals. The first one is cobalt chloride and the second is copper sulfate. Hydrated copper sulfate is in blue. When water is removed, it will form anhydrous copper sulfate which is in white. Hydrated means there is presence of water and anhydrous means that there are no water present. Now this reaction is reversible. Reversible means that from white, we can turn it back into blue by adding water. And the second crystal that you should know the color change is hydrated cobalt chloride which is pink. When water is removed, it will form anhydrous cobalt chloride which is blue. And again, this reaction is reversible by adding water to get hydrated cobalt chloride again. You can screenshot this and remember the color changes. So the color for hydrated cobalt chloride, this is hydrated cobalt chloride, it's pink. And now we're going to look for the formula. This is cobalt and in bracket you've got Roman 2. Roman 2 is its oxidation number. So the charge for cobalt is 2 plus. And chloride is from group 7 so it will be Cl minus 1. Now to come up with the formula, we will take the number on the charge and cross it to the other side. So the formula is cobalt chloride 2. Next, you need to state the color change when a few drops of water is added to anhydrous copper sulfate. So this is anhydrous copper sulfate which was white and when added water, it turned blue. And last question, state how this color change can be reversed. So if you want to reverse from blue to turn into white, you're going to remove water. So you can do that by heating up the hydrated copper to sulfate crystals to remove the water. Next, question 3. Iron is manufactured in a blast furnace. Question A. Three of the starting materials added to the blast furnace are coke, iron ore, and limestone. Name the other starting material added to the blast furnace. This is from your topic of extraction of metal. We will add iron ore, coke, and limestone into the blast furnace. And we're going to burn the coke. Therefore, we will also include hot air into the blast furnace. So the other starting material here is hot air. Question B. The source of iron in the blast furnace is Fe2O3. Fe2O3 is found in iron ore. Name the main ore of iron which contains Fe2O3. It is hematite. 
Don't get confused with bauxite. Bauxite is for aluminium ore, which is Al2O3. Next question two. The iron in Fe2O3 is reduced by reaction with carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is CO and reduced means the iron here has lost oxygen or the oxidation number has been reduced. The unbalanced symbol of equation is shown. Complete the equation. Okay, this should be simple. We have got two iron here, so I will put two here. There are a total of four oxygens on the reactant and only two for the product. So I will put a two here to balance the number of oxygens. So now we have four oxygens on both sides. However, that changes the number of carbon. This becomes two. So we'll put a two here. And now the oxygen turns to become five. So we'll put a three here, giving us six oxygens now. So I'll change this to three. So there's three oxygen here and three oxygen here. So that's a total of six oxygen. We've got three carbons and three carbons, two irons and two irons. Now your equation is balanced. Next, part three. State the change in oxidation number of iron in the reaction in part two. The iron here is the element itself, so the oxidation number is zero. And for Fe2O3 means that the numbers here are the charges for the elements. So the charge of iron was Fe3+. Plus. So from 3+, plus, it reduced to become zero. Part 4. Explain how the change of oxidation number shows that the iron has been reduced. So as I mentioned previously, if it's reduced, it means that the compound has either lost oxygen or the oxidation number has reduced. Next, question C. The major impurity in iron ore is silicon oxide. Limestone is added to the blast furnace to remove this impurity. Write two simple equations to show how silicon oxide is removed. For each equation, state the type of chemical reaction that takes place. So we are going to write the chemical reaction and equation in removing silicon oxide. Let's look at all the reactions for the extraction of iron from hematite. So to remove the impurities of silicon oxide, we are going to add it with calcium oxide. And how did we get calcium oxide? Calcium oxide was obtained from calcium carbonate. We can see here that calcium carbonate has decomposed to form calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. So this process is thermal decomposition. And this here is an acid-base reaction. All the questions here are very straightforward. As long as you know the theories, you should be able to answer all these questions. If you find this difficult, it means that your foundation for chemistry is not strong, so you should do more revision on your theory part. Question D. Iron is converted to steel by mixing it with carbon and other elements. So iron is being converted into steel. Steel is an example of alloy. Part 1. State the term given to a substance which is a mixture of a metal and other elements. So I mentioned already, it is an alloy. Next, part 2. Name one element other than carbon mixed with iron in the making of stainless steel. So in your specification, they have described to you that alloy is a mixture of a metal with other elements. And there are two alloys that you need to know. The first one is brass and the second is stainless steel. Brass is a mixture of copper and zinc, something that you must know. And next, stainless steel is a mixture of iron and other elements such as chromium, nickel and carbon. So you can either mention it is chromium or nickel. Next, question E. Preventing the rusting of steel is important. State the chemical name of rust. The chemical name of rust is hydrated iron oxide. Do not forget to include your oxidation number. Next, steel can be coated with zinc to prevent rusting. This provides both a barrier method and sacrificial protection. Part 1. State the term used for coating steel with zinc. This is known as galvanizing. Next, describe another barrier method for preventing rusting. The simplest method to prevent rust is by painting or coating it with another layer which is plastic. Next, explain how zinc provides a sacrificial protection. Under your reactivity series, you will see that zinc is placed above iron, meaning that zinc is more reactive. So instead of the iron being oxidized, the zinc will be oxidized, preventing the iron from rusting. So for your first mark, you can mention that zinc is more reactive than iron. Therefore, zinc oxidizes instead of iron.